So I wanted to do a quick video today just showing you some solutions to issues I've had. Um, mainly having a large enough processing tray for certain things. Um, this is a 8x10 processing tray here and as you can see even this smaller piece of paper, I can't remember the exact dimensions but obviously it's bigger than 8x10 so that processing tray doesn't work. In fact I've used um, I use uh, cheap baking pans for the cyanotypes I've done that are a little too big to fit in these. Well this one is even bigger. This is tray is a I think it's for 19 by 24 prints. I, I can't remember exactly but once again the problem is it wouldn't fit. I even got some shallow bottom totes to try to um, process it in and they just weren't quite big enough dimensions for it to work. Well, then you get into a two foot by three foot print which is in here. And that one is the one that I just had to rinse off with water. Well, it obviously didn't clear everything correctly and all that. And that's what got me to test out this next part, which I'm going to show you. So this is an this is a 18 by 24 inch cyanotype I did, and I was able to bleach and tone it using this drum drum processor as I'm going to call it, ultra large. Um, I also found it interesting if you look up here you can see where it did not. This is where being able to clear all of that solution is critical before toning because now there's a stain wherever that solution was that it didn't rinse properly which is what made me try this in the first place. So this is just a 55 gallon plastic drum on a frame with four casters. There's a there's a dimple kind of around the back of it which allows it to hold it steady. It doesn't have to be any particular casters. Those are just the ones I found. That enables it to rotate. So it also has just enough of a lip in there to where you can put enough chemistry to completely submerge the paper without having to use tons. That was the other problem. I really want to try some ultra-large silver gelatin prints, but that's just not going to be practical in a tray. I'd have to have an enormous tray in gallons and gallons of chemistry, and I'm not doing that just for a test. <laughs> so, with this, you can put it in, have just enough chemistry to submerge it, and then you can rotate it, but I've just been doing a, when it's wet, it'll stick in there, but when, I've just been doing a rock back and forth. And because of the diameter, that means you can do a pretty big print, which at some point we're going to try the maximum one we can put in there. But I'm going to put some water in there and that two foot by three foot print to kind of show you what you can expect from this. So I filled a little two quart pitcher with water and I have this pan here to, col to collect anything that would spill out. So all you have to do is have a pan in the front of it and then um, when you're done with that chemistry you just tip the back, pour it all out and then put your next chemistry in if, if indeed you need an next chemistry. But um, so it'll hold at least two quarts maybe even roughly a gallon but that's nice that two quarts completely evenly goes front to back and then I'm going to put the two foot by three foot print in here we're going to see I'm going to show you that it'll coat it entirely so Of course it's going to bend a little bit and all that. You may have to have a little more than two coats of uh, chemistry in there depending on what it is you're doing. Um, but you can see that it will... Now here's... I was planning on motorizing this but after finding out that it was going to move around I decided that probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> but so the point of this is really big print and now I can process just about anything I want and then all I have to do to um, 
change out the chemistry, pour it out, and then put a different chemistry in it. And you could use this concept if you don't have a lot of space and you just want to use like a five gallon bucket or something, maybe not a five gallon bucket, but similar concept. So that is it. It's fairly simple, fairly inexpensive, and um, allows you to do really big prints with not a whole bunch of chemistry. So I'll see you in the next video.